Hey everybody, this is my 125 gallon New World tank, and I don't have anything in particular on my mind, I just stopped down to have a look at the fish room before I get started on cooking dinner, and I'm just really, really happy with the way this tank's turning out, so I thought I'd shoot a few minutes of video, don't know how the rest of my evening's going to turn out, so this may very well be it for the video for tonight. We will have to wait and see how that uh, plays out, like I said. But I'm really, really happy with the way this tank's turning out. The silver dollars in particular are a fish that I've wanted for so long. But for whatever reason, I always just wrote them off as a fish that I couldn't keep. And I'm not even sure anymore why I had decided. I think it was because I was told that they were a really skittish fish. And so if I was to walk in and out of the room frequently, it would freak them out and they'd be crashing into stuff and it would probably kill them. And so therefore, you know, I couldn't really keep them. Or maybe it was because they were voracious plant eaters and all my tanks are planted. And I was always told that if you keep silver dollars, they'll destroy your plants. I'm not really sure. But for years, I always looked at them in the store and thought, boy, I wish I could keep them. You know, they really are a neat looking fish and they get big, you know, fairly big, you know, tea saucer size. You know, by the time they're full grown, they'll be six inches in diameter. Uh, at least I would assume, you know, these faster growing larger ones will get that big. And so I took a chance recently and got some. That's when I started my whole... Uh, ordeal with what I now believe to be epistylus where I thought it was ick at the time and I wound up buying two different batches the first ones I brought home on a whim because I saw them and they were so unique and so different looking I didn't realize at the time that they were a different species than I'd ever seen before and they are the ones that you can see swimming around in the back uh, they are spotted silver dollars and they stay significantly smaller than the regular old silver paint job which is what these are so the first ones I got were these these spotted ones and it's because they look like that I saw them in the store and I said I'll take them and I just I didn't even question it anymore I said I'll figure out the details later I took them home and then of course that's when the little white spots that were on them started getting bigger and weirder and I thought it was ick and you know blah 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 we had that whole uh, ordeal but while they were busy recovering I bought some more silver dollars not realizing they were going to be completely different and so I got uh, six more we didn't all six of them didn't survive because they too came home with the same uh, white spots on them and these silver dollars came home about a quarter the size of the spotted ones and you can already see how much bigger they are than the spotted ones so it's going to be interesting to see how big these two at least uh, some of the other full silver ones you know the standard uh, paint job back there they're not too huge but again considering how big they were when I got them they've already gotten to be the same size as those spotted silver dollars and these were literally about the size of a dime when I bought them so they're growing really fast and I'm really excited to see how big they're eventually going to get I am probably definitely absolutely definitely going to have to get in and get these two creek chubs out of there um, they're just going to be way too big for this tank and as those silver dollars get bigger my bio load's going to increase uh, this is already a really really heavily stocked tank in fact it's probably uh, what a lot of people would call an overstocked tank uh, we can get into splitting hairs about what the difference between heavily stocked and overstocked is. Uh, I'm sure some people would say this tank is overstocked. Um, I wouldn't argue with them. You know, again, it's just a matter of splitting hairs on how you want to define it. But since it's my tank, I'm going to call it heavily stocked. So that shiner you can see there in the back is another one that I'm probably going to have to get out of there. And that's going to break my heart. Um, I know it's just a stupid shiner. I actually bought it from a bait and tackle shop years ago uh, as a jumbo shiner, as, as bait fish. And I threw a bunch of them in the tank just to have fish in the tank. When I got this tank set up, it was, I don't know, by the time it was cycled in, it was the middle of December. And so the only place that I could really get any kind of native type fish was shiners at the bait and tackle shop. And so that's what started off this tank 
as far as the first fish that went in there and that big shiner right there is one of the batch of very first fish that went in this tank and I've watched him grow from significantly smaller than that that's the same species right there that is a golden shiner and when I got him it was about half the size of that one and now you see how big it is so you know getting rid of that one's gonna I just I've had it so long I've got sentimental attachment to it at this point and the other one that is eventually going to have to come out uh, is the white sucker fish. I don't know if you've noticed it on the bottom in there. It's probably in the back right there. That is another one that is getting significant in size. And it's just going to keep on growing. They get pretty big. Every time I uh, go out to George's Creek, uh, there's a lot of them I see out there. And they're you know the size of my forearm it looks like underwater i doubt they're actually that big but it sure looks like it they're easily 10 inches to a foot long you know three inches in diameter in the middle so that one is definitely going to get bigger and so that's going to have to come out of here too so other than that as i said not a lot really to talk about i just did a bunch of work on the fish room and this is one of the tanks that got some attention while I was in here and now it's just been sort of sitting here ticking over the tannins are building back up it'll be time to get in there and do another water change soon enough uh, next time I get in there I will have to take the time and clean the filter uh, last time I did it I didn't worry about the filter I had done so much work in the fish room down here and I hit so many tanks in one day that I kind of skimmed over the filter on this tank and we went right for a big water change and called it good so my temple plant is growing in nicely I mean I'm sorry my water sprite I'm actually thinking about my temple plant over here on my gudgeon tank I just got it all nice and propped up here let me turn this fan off I do this every time I come over here I think one of these times I'd remember to turn it off before I start shooting video but I propped this one up recently and now I mean you can see how big that thing's getting uh, one of these days very soon I'm going to be taking that TV out of here. That was in here when I used to actually come down here and ride the extra cycle. Uh, and I didn't have any fish tanks in here. Uh, and so that TV has actually just been sitting there for years and hasn't been turned on. So that will probably get taken out and that will make the sort of backdrop. I know wood paneling is not the most tasteful uh, of decor either. But this house was built in the 70s and that's probably been there since. So... Once the TV is gone, that'll look a little bit better. But I do need to think about raising the light because we're getting pretty close to it at this point. I can go up a little bit higher, but not too much. And, of course, this stuff does grow, you know, 8 or 10 feet out in the uh, wild. So at some point, I'm going to have to start cutting it back and doing something with it. Not to mention what's going on within the tank itself. I need to just get in there. Uh, all this, that's roots from that you know from this plant that main stem is sending out roots like that all over this tank so i need to get in there and trim all that out i need to get in and thin that java fern out as always i need to get in and remove some of the floating duckweed that tends to build up once we get the water level to evaporate a little bit and we get more of that waterfall type effect uh, you get a lot less swirling around on the surface and you actually get a lot better looking, believe it or not. When the water's flowing straight out of here, it just comes straight out this way and it just sort of swirls around and all the duckweed actually prevents any surface movement over here. And it gives the appearance of the tank being fairly stagnant almost, a very low amount of water circulation. Um, but now that the water level's lower, you can see I've got water movement over here. I've got a power head down in the back corner there but you don't get that film that you get when the water is all the way up. And that's where it makes it look stagnant. It gives it that surface biofilm and it makes it look like the water is not moving at all. So I don't have a ton of circulation in here, but you can see the water is moving around through the whole tank. So, you know, no problem on that. It just looks weird when we've got the water uh, fully up. Anyway... That's why I said temple plant. That thing's been looming in the corner of my eye the whole time we've been talking about my new world tank. I've been thinking about that because I'm going to have to do something with it soon. It's really starting to get out of control. But if you look, it's also flowering. It's flowering to the point where I'm starting to drop flowers into the water, which I always enjoy. I tend to leave them in there floating around. Uh, again, that's just part of the natural look to me whenever I'm out, you know, 
in the in the wild and I'm in a stream or a river or something I see leaves and flowers and stuff floating down on it and so I think that looks sort of pretty in my tanks as well if we want to come over here and look at my waterfall tank well, I guess we got to turn all the lights back on I turned them off so we could look at my new world tank we look at my uh, waterfall tank we can see over here they've all sort of collected up underneath the filter at this point but I did have a bunch of flowers from my bleeding heart floating around on the surface you can see the bleeding heart there it's pretty much finishing up what's left of the flowers aren't very attractive they're kind of past their prime it's got that sort of half sour sort of smell that flowers get when they go past their prime like that but you know what are you going to do well, I know what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to remove that and take it outside and uh, let that daylily back there come into its own because that's probably going to be sending up flower spikes here pretty soon. I don't see any at the moment, but it probably won't be long before we're getting flower spikes coming off of that. So there you go, everybody. Just a little random update of a few things that started out by me having a look at the tank here i forgot i'm supposed to be upstairs getting dinner ready i got the grill out there warming up so i would say by now it's good and warm so i'm going to say thanks for watching hope you enjoyed the little brief update around a few odd tanks here in my fish room make sure you subscribe that way you won't miss anything you never know what it's going to be with me and don't forget this one here is my new world tank so thanks for watching see you real soon in the next one